Welcome back to the Spirit Lounge. Today's subject is law. What's, what kind of law? Well, it's the laws that govern our lives. The laws that govern our lives are human, um, natural and universal law. And we'll be talking about those and also delving into some of the basic fundamental principles of what govern the universe itself, which are underpinned in universal law. And those universal laws are also uh, the principles that uh, underpin from metaphysical, spiritual and esoteric perspective the uh, laws that have created the universe itself. Celestial bodies, um, the universe, the multiverse in fact, the galaxies, everything we see above our heads and everything we see beneath our feet and around us 360 degrees if you like. So um, What's human, human law? Well, human laws, we all know, are the myriad of laws that never, never unceasing, never-ending list of laws that govern our human interactions. Human interactions between each other, uh, the planet, um, plant and animal life, uh, marine life, uh, is to prevent us and control our behaviours, effectively to, to have a more orderly and uh, framework to how we live together so we, um, we don't hurt each other mental, emotional or physical. Um, ourselves, nature, another life that we share this beautiful planet with. And also laws that um, that we take to other countries, other countries' laws are slightly different and, but fundamentally the same, um, that govern our lives on a social, um, political, economic and so forth um, uh, foundation. It's how we live together, what governs us. But it's interesting human law because human law is actually based on natural law. And what is natural law? It's our moral, ethical, our conscience. It's what drives us from within. It's, 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 you could say it comes from nature. And what is that? It's our inner nature. It's uh, mother nature. It's, uh, it's how we feel when we go about daily lives that govern, govern our, our interactions. Even without human law, we have an inherent uh, drive within through conscience. Uh, inherent ethical way of being that we know what's right and wrong we're driven by an innate knowing what's right and wrong an innate drive to nurture to love each other to nurture to give to those who are less fortunate or suffering that we see around us uh, we have a conscience not to do not to do wrong to know what right and wrong is know when we're doing something which isn't particularly right because it doesn't resonate with our conscience and we feel a conflict within us we always, have a moral, we always have a moral code within us as well. It drives from our solar plexus. Most of this is from our heart and solar plexus, uh, which drive these behaviours. And these are um, these are natural laws that surround us uh, and that, we, that, um, that exist permanently within life. Natural laws come and go. They get changed. They, they, they are uh, omitted, deleted, uh, transformed into whatever we need to have them to be as human life, as our lives continue. And it could be argued that human law, human law actually enforces natural law. And why is that? It's because human law can be circumvented in all manner of ways. If you have enough power, if you have enough money, if you have enough influence, uh, it can be anything. Or you could run from it for the rest of your life and invade human justice forever and then leave this, leave this human experience never having, um, having had to confront from physical perspective, human perspective, our lives perspective, what you've done. They can be circumvented. Um, so human law are there fundamentally to enforce natural laws and then we load upon those uh, lots of other laws that we want to impose upon ourselves to impose upon free will and we'll discuss that later when we come to universal law. So human laws can be absolutely circumvented and natural law can absolutely be circumvented and all of it can be circumvented through free will. Um, let's move on to universal law. Now, this is the this is the transcendent aspects of life. Universal law can never be circumvented. Now we can now when I say never be circumvented, what do I mean? We can try to circumvent them through our physical lives. Uh, we can try through try to think that karma doesn't apply to us because we've created some um, law of our own. Uh, with the belief or convinced ourselves that um, they have force and uh, negate universal law 
but that's on our uh, that's that that is something we create within our experience but there's an absolute here coming up there is no way of circumventing universal law and the principles of universal law they're absolute there are no excuses i'll give you an example um, there's two examples one um, commercial business oriented example and one uh, i can say occult example I'll give you that I have come across um, during my travels and one of them is that one of them we've heard all of us will have heard this one it's it's only business it doesn't matter if it's done in an office wow it's only business wow. we could behave how we want within an office or within a commercial environment uh, something that basically isn't with our family and friends and um, those actions words and thoughts that we express in those environments don't matter well this is a law that i've heard this is a principle that i've heard people in the business environment and those i've worked with over the many years decades in fact um, spout this is a nonsense there is no law that we can create or invent for ourselves to excuse our behavior that circumvents universal law of karma nothing there's another one within uh, the occult side of things. And just going back onto what we're saying, everything we do, every action, every word, every thought is based out of intent. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, we hold it. No matter what we do, what we say, what we think is ours and ours alone. Uh, we hold the karma exclusively or mutually or collectively for things that we allow to happen, knowing that they are not following universal law or natural law. Uh, we hold the karma, even, even if it's a component of it, we hold it. If we allow something to happen, contribute to, to it happen, or even if we're not even performing the action itself, we hold the karma for that. Uh, make no mistake, this is another absolute. There's lots of absolutes in this video. Some of you may not like this, um, but take it for what you will. The other one is, the, uh, is in the occultic realm. I won't go into that much further in description. And this is the perceived belief that... If you tell a person or a group of people, a nation, a society, um, that you're going to do something in no, no matter how cryptic a way or manner, uh, that you've put the information out there that something is going to happen that is going to affect their lives. Um, mostly this is always a negative in, uh, impact on their lives. And you tell them and whether they realize it or not, or they pick up those messages or not, the fact that you've sent that information out there into the world somehow, through some form, cryptic or otherwise, and people do nothing about it, and you perform the action and the outcome then hits that people, persons, nations, societies, countries, country, then the karma passes on to those to whom it's impacting but not those who perform the action. Another complete falsehood. The intention and the source of that intention holds all the karma. You cannot pass on karma to anyone else. You cannot pass it on to some misguided belief, occultic or otherwise, or some law that we created in our daily lives to convince ourselves it's okay to do something. Or it doesn't matter because it's in an ivory tower or a glass building. We own it. You own it. Um, actions, words and thoughts, everything we do is has a foundation of intent behind it. We have an intention in us. Now that intention could be of love, could be of grace, could be of giving, of unity, of, of expansion, of spirit. It could be of, you, of giving, of um, oneness, of caring. And the result on action will be of that positive vibration. But if the intention of an action is to deceive, is to do something willingly to someone else that is going to hurt, hurt or harm them or, or play games or play these uh, political manoeuvring, personal agendas, um, you've got to remember everything, no matter how microscopic, no matter how fleeting it may be, holds an energy footprint. That energy footprint, be it positive or negative, is called karma. 
Karma is cause and effect. Your actions, words or thoughts in life, no matter how fleeting, no matter how relevant, have a forward energetic footprint which causes an effect. That energetic footprint you hold for eternity. It's written in your Akashic field. It's written in your Akashic records of the quantum field, if that's what you wish to call it from a, from a quantum physics, quantum mechanics perspective. It never goes away. So be mindful of these falsehoods or believing in these illusionary laws because they don't exist. They exist in our minds. They exist in this theatre, but they do not exist in reality because they're not transcendent. They have no value or purpose at all other than to convince ourselves and give us an excuse for what we do. And what is universal law? It's compasses of free will, karma, intention, thought, and energy. From a metaphysical perspective, the universe itself was created from intention and thought. Divine grace, God, um, the one, supreme being, call it whatever you like, um, source itself, is absolute thought. It's absolute intention. It's the force to create and manifest. Manifest from the principle of grace, harmony, and absolute, unconditional love. That's how the universe is created. The thought transformed through intent, and that force transforms energy into matter. It cascades the creation of matter, the destruction of matter, the transformation of matter using cause and effect. The universe is in constant expansion through cause and effect of creation, manifestation and transformation through the principle of free will. The universe will constantly expand, things will come into being, things will be destroyed and new, new creations and new aspects of matter will be, will be formed through free will and cause and effect. It's a naturally occurring, continual, never-ending cycle of expansion. And those same universal principles govern our individual lives. We create through the force of intention within and through thought, we transform energy into physical actions, thoughts, and, into, and uh, and, uh, and being and being what we are through daily lives every action word and thought um, and these create timelines for us uh, our timelines are forward projections of what we've done in the past and they're created through cause and effect through karma the ones we give the most force to through either love or non-love actions and vibrations is what creates our timelines and what we'll experience so this is universal law it's free will we have the free will to follow human law, we have the free will to follow natural law, which is also an inalienable right to expression. One of the things we have is free will, and I, I touched on this earlier at the beginning of this video. Free will is what we all have, but uh, we have to be mindful that we are impacting free will through the, uh, through the human experience. Uh, we have an inalienable right to express be who we are, what we are, say what we think, believe in what we think, what we wish to believe in, every ideology, doctrine, religion, belief system, no matter what it is, we have the free will to follow it. We have the free will to express it. We have the free will. We were born with free will. We were created with free will. Um, we don't have to like what another person believes, thinks or says, but they have the free will to do it and say it. And believe it uh, but we don't have the right to impose ourselves on other people's free will that is having happening in spares now obviously as we can see it um, there's no end to that right now um, this is out to us to in all in all honesty it's up to humanity where free will goes and uh, remember free will and karma are the basis of our lives if we don't have free will if we limit our free will Therefore, we limit what we're able to do and the timelines we're able to create for ourselves through cause and effect and karma. Then I question, we should all question ourselves, are we going to be able to fulfill our purpose in life if we have free will to do so? Um, to digress a little bit, we must remember we're on a planet with 
uh, what, 7.x billion people in it, and we have animal life, plant life around us. Everything has free will, everything has karma, everything has an inalienable right to express itself in how it wishes. Everything has a predetermined component to why they're here, so do we. Um, and we have the right to exist, the right to express and be what we wish to be. Um, we all have a contract and why we came here. We came here for expansion. As I mentioned in my introduction video, it is effectively to return to grace whilst in form. We may take some thousands of physical years of life, thousands upon thousands of many, including of many incarnations to do that. But we're living in a planet today with 7.x billion human beings with infinite divine spirits within them and each and every one of them have, re have achieved a different level of expansion of spiritual expansion whilst having human experience or otherwise so we, we're not all going to be the same and we're not expected to be the same this was never this human experience was never meant to be a homogenous um, experience where everyone was the same where everyone was molded to be the same, to think the same, to eat the same, to feel the same, to conform to each other. We have nations, languages. Uh, we're all meant to be the same because we're, the challenge for us is to be unified and express love to each other because of our differences and despite of our differences. That's the reason. So we need to be mindful of that when we create and impinge on each other's free will no matter what it is. Um, there are human laws to govern um, how we interact with each other, which are there to help create a harmonious society regardless of people's belief systems, but they have the right to believe what they want. This is something that as you go through your spiritual expansion in this journey, you will we'll understand um, it, not the, universe, the universal law and why we're here has absolutely no relevance to what we do as human beings. The human experience is just a transient one. And things change here all the time and what we experience behind us is, either, is collective and individual um, energetic progression, progression, projection, which is creating our timelines. And we can, we can drop into one, to many, one or many timelines at any moment. It only takes a, a certain change or a certain trajectory for enough people to make to, to swap to move humanity to different timelines and we're constantly shifting and moving between them um, and what we will experience is that has the most force so those are the fundamental principles I wanted to discuss today um, they do align with um, quantum physics uh, universal principles do align with quantum physics and we may discuss that in another video but none of this one um, so we have human natural and universal law Universal law consists of intent and thought, which are the underpinning actions that transform energy into matter, into timelines, into what we experience. We interact with those through our inalienable rights of free will and through the governing forces of karma. Karma is also law of attraction. We will experience what we put out. It's karma. It's cause and effect. It's the same thing. So these are the governing principles of the universe and our lives and the lives of each other. So please, I uh, hope you like the video. Please add some comments below and any questions that you uh, wish me to answer or pause from this video itself. Uh, please subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications if you're so inclined and find these videos useful. And um, I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed doing this. It's my second one, and I'm. I'm getting more and more comfortable with it. So thanks again for taking the time to listen to this video and watch, watch me on the screen there. And take care and have a great day. Cheers, bye.